Hello everyone, my name is Andrew and today we will talk about how to connect front-end and back-end in IT. Let's start. So I already told you what is front-end and what is back-end. So what are the differences between those two things? But now let's talk about how do we connect front-end and back-end in our applications. And uh, yeah, that's our final scheme. So that's what, what we're gonna have. But for now, the only thing that we have is, 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 backend and frontend. So I already told you in another video that frontend is uh, all the styles, all the buttons, all the text. So our representation of the program for the final user. So if we look at that website, for example, so uh, draw.io, we can see that we have buttons, we have uh, text, we have that canvas, and uh, we can do different things with all those things. So that is our representation. For example, that button is orange. Uh, that text is black, or uh, we have a different thing for canvas. We have a grid at the background of our canvas. So all of that is representation. We represent our application to our final user. And frontend can be really, really, really different in different projects. So for example, we can make a frontend that is a website. We can make a mobile application. We can make an application for our, um, for our desktop. We can even make a CLI, so common line interface. And that's still going to be a frontend. So frontend is basically a representation for the final user and backend is all the logic in that application. So for example, if I click on file new or file save or I import something from another source, I use backend. So I use backend because I need to save my file on draw.io servers or I need to create a user or I need to delete a user. I need to save an image, I need to send uh, a message to my friend and all that. So all the logic is backend. All the data, all the logic is backend. All the representation is frontend. And that's pretty simple. So as I said, there are various ways of how we can build those things. And uh, I cannot tell you every way in that video. But what I'm gonna tell you is the most popular way for the web right now. So right now, what we have is frontend, which is built with um, a framework. So for example, React.js. React.js or React is a framework on JavaScript language. And um, we use React.js in order to write code easier. So basically it's a framework and uh, yeah, that's kind of it. So we use React in order to write our frontend. I think that application is written in React. So Draw.io is written in React. Maybe Google Docs is written in React. So lots of applications use uh, frameworks today, like 90% of them. And we use backend. So for backend, we're gonna use Python. So basically that's our code. Those, uh, those things, those uh, squares are our code. And uh, we have our frontend in React.js, so JavaScript language React framework, and our backend is in Python. Uh, let's say Python, um, Python Django, for example, because lots of you work with Django. And how do we connect backend, frontend with our user? So what I want to do in that video is explain how can we connect frontend with backend and with our end user. And uh, once again, those are just the those are just our projects. So frontend and backend uh, squares are just our projects. But how do we connect them? So first of all, we're gonna need a server. So server is basically just a computer. It's just a computer that is always available. Uh, it can be turned off when we need it. It can be, it can work for 24 seven, but it's just a computer that is always available. Well, not always, of course it can break, it can turn off, but that's just a computer where we have our code and it's almost always available. That's what I think a server is. And what I'm gonna do is have two servers, so two separate computers for backend and frontend. And of course, there are different ways of how we can set it up. Because if you work in a big company, you are not gonna have one backend server and one frontend server, because there is a problem with um, availability. Yeah, so availability. What's the problem is that if one of the servers um, burns, for example, or is not available, we're not gonna be able to use our application completely. Or um, what if, I don't know, what if there is a problem with uh, the server room for that server? So what is what if there is a problem with computer? If that's the case, then we're not gonna be able to use our whole application. So if I don't have my backend server available, I'm not gonna be able to use backend. And if you're working in, um, in a big company, that's really, really important because whenever your application is not available, you lose money. So that's kind of obvious. But for our purposes, we're gonna have two separate servers. And uh, to, be, to be truthful, you can even use one server. So you can use something like that. Your backend and frontend code is gonna be in one server, but that's not what we want right now. So we're gonna have two separate servers for backend and frontend. And once again, what we do is we basically just go 
get our code from GitHub or somewhere else and put it on two computers. That's it. That's all we're doing right now. Then what we need to do then, once we have our code on those computers, we need to run it. So that uh, process is really, really different for different applications. So for example, in React.js, we need to build our code. So if you're talking about progressive web frameworks, what you need to do is build your code because React.js uses different um, file extensions that are not supported by a browser. So browser, yeah, our web browser is basically a thing or a program that supports three file types. Well, of course, more, but uh, three main file types. HTML for the, yeah, for the things, for the markup. Then CSS for the styles and uh, JS for the code. So basically when we write our code in React.js, we use lots of different file extensions like JSX, or if we're talking about view framework, we use .view. We use different things, we use different, uh, different features of that framework. And there is a problem that our browser does not understand any of those features. The only thing that browser knows is that I can, I know what JavaScript is and I can process JavaScript. That's the only thing that browser knows. And that is why when we use React.js, once we are done writing our project, we need to build our project. So basically there is a comment in um, React.js that allows you to get your React code and convert it to JavaScript code. If I press F12 and open my developer tools, I can go to sources and here inside of, yeah, it's already open because I had another video explaining that, but um, I can see app.diagrams.net, that's my domain, so you can see it here. And if I go to JS, what I'm gonna see is a big app.min.js file. So basically that's our application, that's our application. But that's just a raw JavaScript code. And I'm, <laughs> I'm really, really sure that nobody is gonna write that code by themselves. So what we do is we use React framework in order to make our life easier. But then once we're done with that framework, we need to convert that uh, framework code to JavaScript. And we use a command. Uh, typically it's called something like build or uh, yeah, build production, I don't know. It's called build in almost anything that I use. And what we do is we run React or NPM run build. So we run a command that allows us to convert our React code to JavaScript code. And that's the thing that we use. So now we have front end, we have build.js. That's basically just a JavaScript file. Of course, we have CSS files, we have HTML files and like all the other files, fonts, images, uh, videos, I don't know, anything else. But we have built JS. That's the most important thing. We have JavaScript file that contains our whole application inside of it. And then what do we do? Or we may have uh, different JavaScript files, but the main idea is that we have JavaScript files, not React files. And what do we do next is basically we set up our project and allow our users to connect to it. So what we need to do is first of all, we need to buy our domain domain name. So domain name is that, for example, google.com. Let's have our domain name as google.com. And um, then our user can connect to our server. So if we, if we have a, uh, sorry, if we have a domain name, we can make our user connect to our server. And once we have that, we need to run our project. So we build our JS, but then we need to start it. So we need to start a server that is gonna send our JavaScript files to our user. And the process is really, really different for different frameworks, for even different applications, cause what you can do is you can set up a Docker container, you can set up a virtual machine, you can just run it in the computer itself. So it's really, really different. And uh, you're probably gonna do it by yourself and you're, yeah, I can do it for you if you want me to have a video on how to build React.js project and how to run it on a server. But the process is really, really different and Typically it's kind of simple. So what you need to do is just run your project. And of course, I'm not going to explain how to do it here, but you run your project and then your user can connect to your domain name and get your JavaScript files. But then we need to connect to backend because right now the only thing that we can do is connect to our frontend. And okay, I can press file, I can press edit, I can uh, open up those things, I can draw on my canvas, but I cannot save my files, I cannot create my users, I cannot delete my data, I cannot upload my images because our frontend is not connected to backend yet. So what do we do? Lots of people said that we just need to do that, but that's going to be wrong. Why is that? Why can't we use that link from frontend to backend? Why not? Because we do not connect our frontend and backend like that. We do not do it. What we do when our user asks for our frontend is we basically have a copy of all the files that we are, that, that we need and we send it to user's computer. 
So basically, whenever you want to use your frontend, what you do is you copy all the files from your server and you send them. So user goes to google.com, Google copies all the files that it has that are needed, of course, and sends them to the user. And once the user has our files, what we do then is we connect to our backend like that. So basically, of course, backend has its own domain name like backend.com. And uh, of course, we run our project there. So we everything is the same as it is with uh, JavaScript. So we run our project, we have it available. For example, in Python Django, we need to set up a proxy server, we need to set up um, a VSGI server in Python, but uh, the process is really, really the same. But what we do, what's the most important thing is that we do not connect from front end like that. We copy our files from our server to our user's computer, to your local computer. And then once we have those files there, we connect from our local computer to our backend, just like that. That's how it works. And um, yeah, that's how it works. But I want to tell you another thing. How do we connect our frontend and backend? So we already know that we connect our frontend like that. And by the way, if we have multiple users, all of those users, all of them are gonna have a copy of our frontend on their computer. And after that, multiple users are gonna connect from their local computer to our server. Just like that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's for you to understand. But how do we connect it? Like, what is the, what's the thing that connects it? Well, of course, it's internet. It's our internet, the internet. But how does the internet work? That's the most important question because I ask that to lots of people and they don't know the answer. So basically, what we need to do if we want to connect to machines or to systems or to programs, it doesn't matter, to environments, we need to somehow make, um, we need to have like a unique language that both parties understand. So what I mean by that, for example, if I speak English, but you only speak Chinese, I cannot understand you because I do not speak Chinese. But if we both speak Chinese or we both speak English or we both speak the same language, we can understand each other. And that's basically what we want to do in computers. We want to have the same language or not the language, but the same rules because languages can be different. We use Python here, programming languages. We use Python here, but we use JS here. We use HTML JS, we use CSS JS, we use JavaScript and I don't know, JavaScript, C Sharp, C++ or whatever. But we don't want to use the same programming languages. What we want to use is the same rules when we communicate with each other. So basically, we want to use a protocol. Protocol is a set of rules that both parties understand and both parties comply with. So basically, what we want to do is we want to get our frontend and backend to speak the same language. And that's a protocol. Well, not the same language, but follow the same rules. And that's a protocol. So for example, we can use HTTP as our protocol. And uh, if we go to our uh, to that bar, I don't know how it's called, we can see HTTPS. Well, S basically stands for secure. So yeah, as for secure, we yeah we just secure it. We just use SSL, TSL, all of this. But uh, yeah, we just, I forgot the word. Yeah, we just secure it. So it's basically the same as HTTP, but it's just secured. We encrypt it. Yeah, that's the word, we encrypt it. But basically HTTP is the main protocol that we're gonna use. Well, HTTP, HTTPS, secured, no, it doesn't matter. So always use HTTPS, so secure your connection. But HTTP is the protocol, S is just secured. The same protocol, but with encryption. So what do we do when we want to connect backend and frontend is we use protocol. A protocol, well, the most widely used protocol is HTTP, and we use it in order to connect frontend to backend. We make HTTP requests from frontend to backend. We follow the same rules and our backend can reply to our frontend and frontend can request something from our backend. That's how it works. That's basically it. Of course, you can use different protocols. For example, you can use TCP, kind of like that. You can use UDP, kind of like that. Um, yeah, you can use anything that you want. But HTTP is the most widely used protocol in web. So I think 99% of the applications or maybe 100% of the applications on the web, well, not 100, but like 99.99999% of the applications on the web use HTTP. So that's how it works. You do not connect from your frontend to your backend server, but rather you send a copy of your frontend files to the user, then use HTTP or any other protocol to connect to your backend and you do it like that. So that's how frontend and backend are connected. If you have any problems with understanding what frontend and backend are, watch my other video because I explained it there. But for now, thank you for watching. My name is Andrew.
and bye bye